Welcome back to episode number 11 of the Bloodborne Ultimate Walkthrough Guide. Today we're going to be conquering Kanehurst Castle. This is going to be one of the more difficult episodes that we're going to do. Uh, most of you might feel under-leveled, so before we start into this, if you feel like you want to get to level 60, which I feel is a good level to be at, that's what I would suggest. The main reason I say that is because we'll be counting on dealing visceral damage to the boss and that increases significantly at level 60 so i would say getting to at least level 60 is really good and we're not too far from that and you probably have some cold blood that you can consume and whatnot so we'll go about it like that i'm gonna play it um, regardless of my level but i would encourage you if you're not not feeling too confident or you're struggling when you do meet the boss to go ahead and farm up to level 60 to improve that damage there. All right. So first off, before we leave, I'm going to go ahead and consume all my cold blood. These are all these consumable items that I've got in here. And I'm going to use those to spend some level up points on vitality, increasing my hit pool. Okay, now I've consumed what I can. One other thing that we can do pretty easily is sell are items that we'll definitely not be using specifically some of these blood gemstones these lower tier ones go ahead and get rid of those all right now let's go ahead and level up a little bit oh, I'm what is it very wet perfect farewell good hunter just to give you an idea of where we're headed with the vitality stat, we're going to cap that at 30 and we probably won't ever touch it again. Um, endurance will push it more towards 40 and strength will go up to 50. Those are kind of our goals that we're setting for ourselves. But uh, vitality has a nice soft cap at 30. And what I mean by soft cap is it's just, it becomes less beneficial at that point so you should focus on investing in other stats. All right, so we're going to make sure that we don't have the ability to fortify anything that we're currently using. We'll be eventually using the blunderbuss on the boss fight. You can use the hunter pistol. You can really use any uh, gun that you feel comfortable with parrying, but the blunderbuss is usually the most forgiving. And then uh, during the boss fight, we'll also be using either the Hunter Axe or something like the Saw Cleaver, Saw Spear. Really anything that we've got, but since we've been investing in strength, we're going to continue to use the Hunter Axe. All right. So let's go ahead and make our journey. I misspoke originally, so I needed to edit this. We're going to head over to the Hemwick Charnel Lane. Okay. So... Just like when we had headed through the Forbidden Woods yesterday to get back to Yosefka's clinic, we're going to go through here, avoiding any combat if necessary. So let's just go ahead and start with our sprints. We're going to head to the right here. You're going to head up these stairs. The only enemy we need to worry about is one that's going to be right behind us. So hit this lever and turn around. So they're not going to be coming for us, so we're good. You just always want to make sure that you look behind you there because you never know if it's actually going to be coming forward or not. Okay, so we're going to have some carrion crows here. We'll have a guy to our right. We're just not stopping. Remember this. Just keep moving. Now we're going to have two big beef boys right here, but that's okay. We're just running straight towards this monument. We're going to get ourselves a cutscene, but you need to be prepared that the moment this cutscene ends, we need to board this wagon. It's not automatic, so you have to do it quickly. You will be get, getting attacked by the enemies in the area.
So as you saw, I ran around as quickly as I could and got right next to the open door and pressed the X button. If you want to play it safe, if you're not confident that you'll be able to do that on your first go around, what I would suggest is kill the two executioners, then sp spark this cutscene here. That way you can evade back to where the executioners were if you get overwhelmed by the doggo werewolf dudes. All right, so here we are at the Forsaken Kanehurst Castle. Uh, this is going to be quite a, a step up in challenge compared to what we've been doing. These beasts that you're about to fight are very strong, but there's some pretty good technique that we can use to deal with them considering the weapon that we're using. But first and foremost, you wanna light this lamp. And this is gonna be the lamp that we use throughout the zone. There is a shortcut over here, an elevator, that we will un eventually unlock. And this will become our closest friend for this zone. So we can't open that just yet, but soon enough we'll get it. And there's going to be an item here. So, the honest truth is, for the most part, you should probably try to avoid these enemies. They are tough but they're quite lucrative. So I plan to kill them all just to show you how to deal with them. However, I think most of you would probably just want to bypass them. But you should be able to gain three levels throughout this zone, potentially more, if you decide to kill everything. And believe me, these are the toughest enemies that you'll face besides the boss. So. I like to start up top here first, because we've got a roaming one over here, so I'm going to drag this guy, if I can. Actually, since we spent so much time talking, that's the one right here. The guy that roams around is this one. He usually starts in the middle, but he ended up here because we went to the elevator first, so I can show you that. So we're going to be using the L2 attack. You could use these structures to protect yourself, and there are some where you can sandwich the enemy. That there is a combo that they love to do. You can see how fast their uh, you can see how fast their attacks are. So you got to be careful. I'm just trying to show you a little bit. I didn't use the L2 attack there because it staggers them a little bit, but that's what we plan to do. So I'm just gonna chain three together. And then back up. Let my stamina recover. And then we'll go in again. When they jump like that, they're usually going to do two to close the distance. So if you're far enough away when they jump up in the air, they're still going to do another jump to continue to close the distance. So use that to your advantage. We'll pick up this item here. This zone has plenty of numbing mist that's just going to prevent things from healing. Alright, so this one has poor visibility for some reason. And that's a terrible way to start it. Mm, two big misses in a row. Feeling good. So there's the jumps that I was talking about. So those are good for us when they do the jumps because it allows us to get a timing, a nice understanding of the enemy's movement, and we can take advantage of that. So up above here, you're going to see these two statues right in front of us. These can be used to body block this enemy here. So you don't want to aggro both of them. 
but you can do this one right here. So it doesn't always decide to pin itself there, but you can typically dance around it and it'll eventually decide to do it. So just back up a little bit. If you don't want to knock it completely back, you can use the L2 attacks just to make sure that it doesn't get knocked so far back that when it approaches you again that it circles around these statues. So you can definitely use these to your advantage. It's, they're just there's a gap big enough just to allow that enemy to get stuck. The sounds that you're hearing are the enemies below you. I'm going to suggest you get over here first cuz you don't want to fall down below. So again, we're going to try to deal three L2 attacks and then back out. Alright, when it's doing that combo, it's going to give you an opportunity to heal as long as you're far enough away from it. Okay. Yeah, so the combat here is not going to go perfect. You're going to make mistakes. But the thing is to just stay calm. If you try to rush things, if you try to fight more than one enemy at once, you're going to have a real difficult time. So here we see we've got a lot of statues, and then we've got this gap right here. We can utilize that for our advantage here if we want. I usually like to back away from this area when I do this. So if you hug the wall and approach this enemy from behind, you can get a power-up attack. The one enemy to the right is not going to attack us unless we move towards it. And the big one behind... Let me show you. The big one behind is actually not going to attack at all because it's overstuffed. It's overgorged. So I'm just going to move in a little bit closer, charge one up. And now I'm going to back up. So we can try to trap this guy here just like that. I personally, I don't really think this is necessary, but it's probably better to do it than risk aggroing that other enemy. Just depends on your comfort zone with this with the area here so again we don't need to worry about the big guy so we're going to leave them for last so we're just going to come up to this one chunk it for big damage that's yeah, bad Yeah, so there's an example of me making a terrible mistake, not following my own advice. So you can see how much damage they do. Um, it's not a lot on some of the hits, but they're really quick, and we're swinging a slow weapon, so you have to be aware of that. I don't think these are the type of enemies that you really want to trade with, considering the fact that we'll exhaust ourselves after a couple swings. So you can see how time-consuming fighting these kind of enemies are, because you have to be extra careful. But at the same time, they give you a lot of blood echoes. And you are next to the lamp. So, the risk is not that great. There's just not a big risk here. Alright, so we've cleared out most of the difficult enemies. We've got two more of those... Um, I don't know what they're called. Let's just call them Tasty Boys. So, we've got two more of them on this mid-tier level here. So, we're going to deal with them first. And we just want to approach slowly to get the attention of one. That was a huge jump. So 
some of the terrain is hard to tell if you've got a decent amount of distance because they can jump in such weird directions. And I've gone through here from the reverse side where I've come from above and dropped down and fought these guys. I'm going to say that this is the better way to do it, even though the terrain is kind of interesting to navigate. Even the bug is having a hard time moving in here. It's really rocky terrain right here, so... Now we can kind of look down below and see what's going on. If you... Huh. We can't really see them from here. Oh, there we go. So there are these parasites. Well, we've seen these before in kind of like the swampy lake area. You don't want to mess with these. Our weapon that we're using is kind of crummy for this. You can absolutely run through here and grab the item at the end of the path. But we'll just take this slow. I'm going to use L2 because it's one of our lower swooping attacks. So it looks like we're going to take three swings to get them. The R2 power-up could sometimes work for this, but it's still going to miss a fair amount. You just want to be careful. Now, you see that one just came out of the rock. The further we move in, the more these guys jump out. So we'll see a couple spawn out. So that's why you really want to move slow, unless you're just planning to run in there and loot. If your goal is to just run in there and grab the item, then you just run in and run out. But I'm just trying to give you guys as much information as I can. And unfortunately, that's going to make this episode move a little bit slower than I'd like it to. Okay, I think we probably got about four more. We're going to have some more spawn if I had to guess. Yeah. So it's either, I think two of them at a time pop out. So this might be the end of what we've got. You just want to continue to wait and let your stamina charge up. Oh, there's the fourth one. Should be the l oh. <laughs> There's so many of these things. I can't really keep count. It's weird though, because sometimes we get them in two hits, and then others we needed three. So, there we go. We got the item, and we have killed all the troublesome enemies in this start of the zone here. So. Honestly, you're the one that needs to make the decision if you want to fight all this stuff or not. You can absolutely just run from the lantern all the way to this front door. And it just opens automatically. You don't have to unlock it. It's closed when you approach it, but when you get next to it, it's open. And it opened up earlier for us when we were creeping around here to fight one of those tasty boys. So that's what you're seeing. Now... You're going to see some enemies in here, and you're going to hear some enemies that you can't see. This is important. These, uh, what we'll call servants, I guess, they are only aggro if you attack them. But you want to kill them before you end up accidentally hitting one while you're fighting other enemies. So let's go ahead and just go through here and kill these guys. Now... Don't be quick to loot anything. We want to kill all the uh, servants before we loot. Those sounds of crying that you hear, those are ghosts. 
and they'll spawn the moment we take any loot item. And I'm talking about the whole place is going to spawn. So we're just going to go through. I think you can loot a corpse, though. Yeah. So don't loot the pre-existing stuff. Not until we've cleared this out. So I think there's three enemies down here. And then there should be two up top. And now, I'm not saying that the en the ghost enemies that we're about to fight after we kill these guys and, and loot something are tough. Because they're not. Especially for the way that we're going to fight them. We've got the perfect setup to kind of deal with them. But, again, we're going over strategy and tactics with the understanding that varying skill levels. And we want to make things as easy as possible for any style of player. There's not much you can do about that. You can only target, lock, and swing the way that the weapon will swing. So sometimes it's a little frustrating when you make a miss. And that's why I didn't do the charge up against the, uh, the, the worm creatures, the parasites. Because we would swing over them the majority of the time. So um, I'm going to start with looting down here. So we'll just loot the first item here. And then you'll see these ghosts spawn up. So, you can see immediately there's one right next to us. So, once once you're close to them, they're targetable. And these we're going to power up. And then we're going to come in with an L2. You have to allow them to stand. If you don't allow them to stand, you will not be able to hit them. Also, you can see how these almost translucent, transparent? I don't know. S semi invisible ghosties right here are uh, waiting for you to get close enough then they'll reveal themselves this one's right in front of me and I try to target it and it just moves my camera we're definitely close enough to target it of course but it's not essentially activated yet so once we get in close like this now it reveals and we can target it so they're very easy if you approach them methodically with the understanding of how they work there are variants to these ghosts, and we'll discuss those when we get to them. But uh, it, they're just a different style. They don't, they're not necessarily any harder. So I'll show you what happens if we swing too quickly while the enemy's trying to get up. Goes right through them. So it's subtle. It's about a half a second at the most that you need to wait. But if you just immediately go back into another swing, you're, you're never going to make it. And this is definitely one of the most boring things you're going to be doing. It's, uh, it's not a fun way to fight. And I think that's why when people watch me stream the games, they don't understand. They see me in the guides and they see, you know, I don't really have trouble doing anything. Uh, if I play the game the way I, that I know how and, and thinking about it and making smart decisions. But when I play the game, you know, you play games so many times that sometimes you just want to have fun. Create a little bit of a challenge. Mix it up some. So I won't be playing as smart or as decisive as I will in something like this. I'll take I'll take more chances. I'll get impatient. So there is a drastic difference between my playing styles in a guide and my playing style when I've got a live audience. Cause honestly, who would want to watch me walk up to these ghosts? charge up an R2 and then an L2 over and over and over again. That's just no fun. So hopefully I can keep you engaged a little bit while we're doing this by talking a little bit more than I usually would. 
Now, when you get multiples, you may want to just wait a little bit because they, they move super slow. So you can try to clump them together. That's why I disengaged the target lock there. So that I was sure to get both swings on them. In fact, when I know I'm fighting more than one, I'm almost never target locking them. So you can see there are plenty of them, and like we could totally bypass this one if we wanted to. But, uh, like I said, we're gonna try to get to level 60 if at all possible. Just for the increased damage on the boss fight. So pretty much all kills that we can pull off are gonna be highly beneficial to us. The chunk is uh, an absolute essential item. We need to get those as, as much as we can. That's our next upgrade tier. And you can if you're lucky, you can get enough of them to upgrade your weapon to plus seven. So we may have an opportunity to do that. It's not 100%, but we'll have a chance to. And if you really need to, you can farm some of these enemies to potentially get those stones. I'm never going to do farming in any of the guides unless it's specifically a video only on farming but the way I approach the zones and where we're going and what we're fighting is specifically to avoid you needing to farm I'm sending you to the zones based off of your character's level and what your skills should be at and how difficult they should be so technically this is we are totally fine and capable of defeating this zone without issue i just know that this is a troublesome zone for some of the newer players so that's why i suggest leveling up to 60 so that you can do more visceral attack damage especially because it's not something that we've been focusing on too much all right so here the reason i'm standing here is because we need to run all the way through this room there's going to be enemies that spawn regardless of us trying to grab the loot or not. So we just want to run from the door all the way to the exit. And then we're going to approach back in and kill everything piece by piece. So you can hear them all. And now they're there. So you can let them come to you if you want. I would say maybe just kill these three or four that are approaching. Or we can deal with it like this they got me. a little bit too far away all right so like any other situation unless you're trying to run through an area Always grab the loot last. So that one had their full back to us. So we didn't have to worry about doing too much. We could get a visceral hit there. grab the loot and to my knowledge the phantoms never drop anything I can't recall ever grabbing an item off of their corpse I could be wrong I'd hate for that to have already happened in this episode and not even remember it but I don't think they ever drop anything all right so we've cleared that we're gonna approach the stairway here and we've got a new enemy that's about to be introduced to us we can basically look directly over my character's head and there is a creature that blends in with this area very well they're not very deadly but when you don't see them they have a grab attack that can do some significant damage to you they're gonna lunge out get the upper hand 
You could throw a pebble at it if you want, but there's no reason to do that. Because we can just walk up the stairs here and flank it. You're going to hear some noise. You don't need to react to that. We've got this enemy coming down here, so charge in. Oh, I missed that terribly. So I'm going to do that from behind here. So, these are the enemies that you could technically farm to get some upgrade materials from. Occasionally, you can get a chunk off of them. It's, it's pretty rare, but it can happen. Alright, so we've got the one enemy that I pointed out here. And these are the same enemies. So, if you just walk up to it, it would lunge. But we're close enough to do a charge-up attack. So, that's what I want to do here. When it's down on its back like that... Oh, I'm sorry, it was on its belly. If it lands on its back, like how it's dead now, if you attack it and it lands on its back, you can still do damage to it with your weapon. If it, if you attack and it lands on its stomach, you can't hurt it. It's basically in a recovery phase. You have to wait for it to get back up. We've got an enemy up there. No reason to hit it with ranged attack. You can just flank it. They seem to be quite dumb this specific enemy not the type of enemy but just this individual i don't know what they're waiting for they could have easily got to jump on us at any point down there but yeah i'm not quite sure what they were waiting on so we pick up another chunk so now we've gotten two in this zone already oof So we've gotten two chunks in this zone. Eventually we'll run into a nightmare creature that we can kill that has the potential to drop chunks. But as you know, those things are never guaranteed. So we've definitely got opportunities here. This guy is, um, he's gonna do a leap attack towards us. But as long as you stay on the edge there, he's not gonna be close enough to get us. All right, so here is just a statue. I know it looks like an enemy. This is the only guy we've got to worry about. I would say charge up an R2, they're very fast. But you want to get in on them as quickly as you can. Okay, doesn't always work. Do not try to stay in with them. If they land a hit, do not go for regain because they they swing so much faster than us. We're just not going to be able to sustain while we're trying to trade hits. So as you saw, they hit me. I backed off and immediately channeled another strong attack. And I was able to regain anyways because of how quickly that occurred. But we don't want to be trying to trade with that enemy. Um, most of the statues and stuff, you're not... Like, I know they kind of look like they're going to be hiding something, but they're not. They're pretty much just for decoration. Of course, the, uh, what I'll say, gargoyle-style enemies look like they're trapped or mixed in between them. But for the most part, even though they're the exact same color, you should be able to recognize where their placements are and how to deal with them. So these two, if we move close enough, they'll come together. Then we're going to move back, and they basically kind of trap themselves right here. So we get an opportunity to kill them pretty easily. So you just move in close enough until they until they aggro. And you're just going to retreat. Allow them to close the distance. You can stand right here while you wait for that to happen. Come on, boys. That's not how it works. All right, so they didn't do what I was hoping they'd do, but that's okay. Of course, we have this to do. There's always a plan B. So if they had continued to pursue simultaneously, they basically wedged themselves here together, shoulder to shoulder, and uh, neither one of them decides to step back to allow the other one through. 
So we got the Executioner set. I like it. It's pretty cool. But we're playing Fashion Souls right now, so I'm keeping this gear on. The, um... The Executioner set has... Very good Arcane Resist. Alright, so let's do a little bit of explaining in this zone. Way off in the distance. You know what? Let's pull this bad boy out. You see that candle right in the crosshair? My axe is getting in the way, but... There's a little dude holding the candelabra there. That is a ranged enemy. And when you get about halfway into this zone, they're going to start firing darts at you. The darts do negligible damage. But what they do is they alert the enemies, these phantoms here, that we can halfway see, to our presence. And they all detect us at a much closer range. Jesus Christ. How do I get off this thing? I never use it. Uh... Let's see. <laughs> ah, there we go. Classic. So, yeah, um, I was just excited to be able to have an opportunity to put that thing to use. So, what I suggest is just piece by piece going through here and dealing with these enemies. Um, we've got access to that elevator shortcut that I pointed out to you. So, you can go ahead and activate that. I'm not going to go back to the hunter's dream just yet because there's really no risk to what we're doing right now you'd have to make a pretty massive mistake to get killed at this point but if you want to if you really want to be careful go ahead and do it because nothing you're not going to be backtracking at any point from now on everything that we fight in front of us is all new this file blood register is an online item only. Not really going to go over that because it's not something that we're focused on. But it has to do with the vile bloods and just tracking who is in that covenant. Tactic hasn't changed. The only thing that's different here is that we're just going to be focused on clearing out some of these enemies before we make a run to kill the guy with the candelabra. So we're just going to pull a few of these. And it's good to get some of their attention because we do want them to come towards us. Like I said, when we can hit multiples, we're going to take off the target lock to make sure that we can successfully get them. I'm going to move back around this way and take some of these out on this side. And after we kill this one behind the current combatant, we'll be headed in. And we're just going to make a sprint straight towards that little guy. So you can see he's standing on uh, a staircase and obviously to get to that staircase we have to approach from the left. So what I'm going to do is kind of zigzag through here. You can keep your eye on him and when he's using the dart, oops, thought we were going up. Oh my god, we're just hitting everything. Alright, once we get rid of him, just go ahead and back up. And now we can kill everything really easily. That was smooth. Super smooth. Even if these things do hit you, they're not going to interrupt your power-up attack. So you're going to regain instantaneously. It's essentially like not getting hit. But of course, you always want to avoid taking the damage for no reason. Maybe I can get these all to 
come together. There we go. Yeah, and these things are frustrating because this uh, constant noise that they make. So what we're going to do here is run up this stairs. You're going to make a little bit of a jump, and then you can loot this chest. This is a new pistol that we've got. It works uh, really well, but it's got a blood tinge requirement to it. So something that you need to be aware of there. Let's see. All the other sobbing that we're hearing is above us, I believe. Looks like we've gotten everything. Eventually, we're going to open up this, this bookcase here. And if you look above, you'll see that ladder. And that's going to link us to the boss eventually. We're going to use that shortcut to go from the ladder to the elevator to get to and from the boss. So definitely important to understand how this stuff links up. This area we want to pay attention to, there's um, some tactics to use here. Just because we see that enemy in front of us doesn't mean we want to attack them. Specifically, for that reason right above my head, we've got another little dude with the candelabra. And these guys are different than the one we just killed. I know you didn't see me get hit by a dart, but like I said, the dart downstairs does no damage. It just alerts the enemies to my presence. These guys actually hit you with some heavy... Uh, heavy damage, so you got to be careful about that. So we're going to approach in a different fashion here. We're going to do it more of a stealth type way. We're going to kill these enemies in uh, in this order here. We get this guy. Oh, I thought he was dead. Strong boy. Then we're going to kill this guy here. Oh, I fucked this up. <laughs> Man. Okay, so I'm actually going to return because I need to show you the proper way. I need to show you the proper way. I don't want you to have to uh, scramble. So we'll go ahead and take the shortcut. My mistake. I knew something would happen this episode. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot going on here. So we're going to go back to the hunter's dream. We'll go ahead and spend what we got. It's not like uh, super dangerous to do that fight in a, in a scrum, but I can show you how to do it without ever being in any danger whatsoever. And if you're wondering why I don't edit that out, it's, I think it's important to show you guys how to react to stuff when it doesn't go according to plan, so you can know how to back out and reapproach things. Very well. Just overall reset something. Okay, so we're only required to have 1,700 more blood echoes for the next level to get Farewell, us to, to uh, 30 vitality. So I'm going to go ahead and consume some of this. Welcome. What is it? Very well. Let me. So now we've got that vitality to our soft lock. And we're three levels away from level 60. Which will give us the increase in the uh, visceral attack rating. Alright. Let's see how many of the chunks we have right now. Looks like we have three. So let's go ahead and use that. Nice. Okay. So let's head back to... Oh, it's right here. Making all kinds of good decisions. Forsaken Castle Canehurst. Okay. So now you're going to get to see... How we approach getting back there. So, just going to take the elevator... We don't need to fight. So we're just going to run past all this stuff and run up the stairs. 
I'm gonna get hit by this guy so you can see what happens. You can see barely any damage taken, but it just alerts all those... All those spoops to where we are. And then it fades off. Okay. Alright. Making all kinds of noise here. So what... <laughs> what I want to do is I want to kill this guy first. Do not attack that. We can go ahead and kill this one, that's fine. Okay. Now we're gonna keep our eyes on that enemy right there that's roaming. The moment they turn to go back the direction that they came from, we're gonna move in and kill this one washing the windows. Kinda sucks. Dude's just doing his job. But, got to die. We don't wanna run in, we don't wanna make too much noise, but we wanna get in this alcove. Okay, so I'm gonna extend the weapon. And you can see this one's a little bit different than the one we just killed. This guy's got a sword. So, the moment we get an opportunity, we're just going to charge this up. Uh, and we're going to get screwed. And we're going to get screwed. And this is the beauty of how easy this weapon is. It's so forgiving. There's another chunk, so three guaranteed chunks that we've seen. If you didn't already have one, now you could have upgraded your weapon. So that's good to know. Here we can just approach this enemy. The moment we kill this guy, those two, the one uh, right behind the railing there by the pillar, and the other one washing the floor right there are going to come at us. So I'm going to run right back here afterwards. go. Gonna extend. I want these guys to kind of come at me staggered. That's why I'm separating them with the table here. So we're gonna get a charge up a little bit. There we go. Back off. Perfect. Just what we wanted. All right, there's no other danger. There's like a, an enemy that's just chilling. We're gonna go kill them. But other than that, there's nothing to really worry about here. That same one that we saw originally. So we're just gonna come deal with them. Sweet. As you can see by the loot alone, that's exactly why you wanna kill stuff, even though there was no threat from that enemy. We still wanted to deal with it. Okay, so we're headed next to this open here in the window. There's no real threat here. We're just going to drop down. If you see here below, those are those two gargoyle-like creatures that we killed earlier. And then you can hear all the spoops crying where we came from before. The moment we drop down onto the ground, there's going to be a gargoyle that flies from that tower area over here. So we want to just fight it as quickly as possible. You can see it landing, and we're just going to deal damage to this guy. So it's on its back. Oh my god. It's got to be wiggling on its back. Sorry, I didn't explain that properly. So let's get this guy. I don't know why we haven't gotten an example of that yet. It's unfortunate. I really wanted to show you the difference between that, but it's okay. 
they're very non-threatening enemies to begin with. Um, we're going to start off by going in here. So this is going to be the location where we have the different types of ghosts. So, I know it's hard to see, but the enemy directly in front of my character has, uh, a he has their head in their hands. They are going to scream and paralyze us within a certain radius. So when you see that enemy, whoa, shit, <laughs> approaching you, you need to be very aware that that is the tactic. It does not do any physical damage to you. It basically just leaves you vulnerable for anything else, like this ghost here, to come and get the kill. Alright, so we'll go ahead and deal with this one. You just want to make sure in this area more so than the others that you're aware of the location of those ghosts. So this one is already aggroed and now it's only a threat because that one is still alive. So there I'm showing you the example. We're not being attacked by anything right now so I'm going to let this get to me. And now I can't move. So you just have to be aware um, of the dangers that you're facing. So there's one of the headless right there. Really hard to see that one. Now, just because the enemy is not targetable doesn't mean that you can't hurt it. So obviously we get close enough to do the damage there. And as you can see, that'll take you out of your swing. So just rushing that screaming ghost is not is not necessarily the answer. We've got some spoops over here. But more importantly, we've got a little candel candelabra dude with them. So you want to make sure that you clear that out of your way. And when you come in, you're going to charge up an attack from this edge here. And back out. You do not want to hang around there. Immediately, your plan is to escape. So if it's approaching you, like we've got a couple of them. You don't want to do a charge up. If they're aggroed on you, you don't want to take that time. <laughs> it's super annoying. So once they clear that edge, it's fine. Then we can charge it up because we don't have to worry about that bad guy. Double stun. Alright. He's still got the uh, sword lady with him, but that's fine. We just kind of want to draw him out a little bit. Oh my god. She's pissed. She's only screaming because he marked us. She doesn't have the same effect as the other ones do. Um, the Quicksilver bullet drop here seems to be consistent. I don't think it's anything but. So if you really don't want to fight that guy, you don't have to. But it's, it's blood echoes. And it makes getting the Executioner's Glove easier. Um, it shouldn't have any bearing on getting the... Uh, man, what is this set called? Drawing a blank on this armor up here. Oops. Let's refresh my memory. The Knight's Guard. There we go. Okay, so don't spend any time looking for a way out of this room. 
the the only exit is the entrance so we're gonna go out and then you're gonna drop down here you're gonna stay along here and before you jump into there and open up that shortcut that I pointed out earlier we're gonna deal with this guy up top throw a pebble at this dude charge up or better yet hit him twice with it actually succeed oh no oh that is probably the biggest reason I I try to avoid target lock because of dodge see the way that it made me jump at an angle backwards was not what I was intending to do so I almost died strictly because I had target lock on when I dodged you always be very careful of that. It's extremely dangerous. All right. So we can drop down here. There's no enemies to be aware of. Go ahead and open up the shortcut. It's going to reveal that ladder. Now it's completed the segment, so you can get up to the top. We're going to go ahead and take it up here. Just because we want to complete a few things and then head back. So there's a few things we want to do before we leave. Grab this. This is going to be um, a skill increase gemstone. Not something that we're going to utilize, but something very effective. Now, if, if we hadn't killed those enemies below... And we were running through here right now they'd be shooting darts at us so if you have already went back to the hunter's dream and you just coming here to kill this guy see we get two chunks there that's nice so now we've gotten i believe six chunks from this zone really good so if uh you had reset those enemies down below just be aware you're gonna get fired upon so don't don't move slowly through here and kind of zigzag a little bit. I would say keep close to the bookshelves because they won't have the angle to hit you there and there's nothing to be afraid of. So all I'm going to do is fight this one enemy. There's going to be a red eye here. I just want to show you. They have a very large aggro radius. So let's get them to notice us. Obviously, we don't have to worry about that range attack. There we go. They're not strong, but they do damage, if that makes sense. They don't have a whole lot of hit points. All right, so we can see those two gargoyles above our head there. They're going to come at us. We're going to attack one as it's landing. This is why we kill the red eye first, by dragging him. Ugly dudes. See, this one's on his back, so we can hurt it. They finally did it. It only took, like, a million different enemies. Nice. Okay. Now we can grab the loot. Knight's wig. That's for the messengers. Just a little little outfit type thing you can give them all right and uh the next area is basically headed towards the boss i am just gonna loot this stuff first we've only got a couple things to grab so we've got this corpse here and then one more item at the top and the reason I wanted to make sure to grab everything is because when we go back we're gonna spend our cold blood and it may just make the difference but you don't have to go all the way this way you can save that for when you fight the boss if you like so the boss fight will start when you go through this door here so just be aware of that that's where the fog gate will be at, uh, if you die so 
This is where we'll be headed in a moment. All right. Let's channel those echoes. Oops, don't want to do that. Um, yeah, let's go for endurance. I like where we're at right now with 30 vitality and 30 strength. I feel like at this point, we're just going to focus purely on getting endurance to 40. And after endurance is 40, we'll always go into strength. Everything else will go into strength. All right, so we're going to be headed towards the boss fight now. We want to make sure that we've got our blunderbuss equipped and our axe. We're going to fight this boss in one-handed axe style. So that should tell you exactly what we plan to do here. I also want to get... Yosefka's Blood Vial. This, uh, we should be using this in boss fights, definitely, because we can get as many as we want over and over again. Same thing with um, the other Blood Vial. I don't think we have one at the moment. No, we don't. But if you want to get the Blood Vial from one of the kind ladies, I suggest not the prostitute's blood, because eventually you'll make the fancy lady really mad, and she'll kill her, and we don't want that. All right, so we're going to head over to Forsaken Castle Kanehurst. And we're just headed towards the elevator. So currently, we are not at level 60. So we're going to be doing less damage to the boss in the visceral attack state than, than we had hoped to. But that's all right. The tactic is still the same. We'll just have to land one or two extra parries than we would have otherwise. Now, I will say this fight is probably going to be the toughest one that you guys have dealt with. That's quite loud and annoying. So once you're at the top, you're just going to head out this door here and around the stairs. So I'm actually going to fight the red eye and I'll show you why. We want to take a little bit of damage by getting our silver bullets and then regain that damage off of attacking this dude. So I'm just going to bait him over here. And we got that health up. So we got five free bullets, essentially. Now, if you're not comfortable with doing it against this style of enemy, you could absolutely do it against the lesser ghost down below. I just choose to do him right there because I don't have to listen to all that screaming and wailing. It's really annoying. So the bullets are important. It's not a perfect thing to parry. It's quite difficult to get used to, and I know most of us aren't doing it as frequently as we could be because we're using this kind of strength build. So we're relying upon our big weapon, making big hits. But that's just not the style of combat we're going to use in this fight. So the key things to remember here are be calm. We want to stay at a certain distance from the boss. I'm going to say close to medium. Typically, we're going to dodge into the boss instead of away from it, depending on what the boss is doing. I'll do my best to try to explain what's going on during the fight, but I also need to focus, of course, to do so. So what I'm looking for in the first stage is the boss has a very slow melee swing in the first stage. It's so slow that if you're not used to it, you'll probably try to parry it well ahead of time. Obviously that won't work. So you kind of want to wait and it's okay if you wait long enough to also get hit by his ax, as long as you land the shot and can recover and land the visceral before then, because you'll regain that health, that damage that you took from their melee swing. The boss is going to be very spammy with spells. Very spammy. Uh, that's why we want to keep at a certain distance so we can try to 
eliminate so many so much of that casting the closer we are the more likely they're to use melee of course if we're at an extended range they're never going to use melee they'll have a second phase sometimes they'll charge up to go into that second phase and other times they won't and they'll just transition into it instantly so that is not an exact science if they do do a charge up you will see them it's very obvious you can get in a few shots and then bail i'll say if you're close to them when they start charging up then land a charge up attack yourself and try to get a visceral stab uh, but the aoe blast radius of their charge up is much larger than you would expect there's no way to really tell how big it is just by your first examination of it I can tell you that I felt that I was very comfortable distance away from it a few times and got hit. So just be aware of that. But that only occurs once. There's another move in the second phase that um, that I know they'll do. They'll stab a sword into the ground. Um, it's kind of like a channel charge up type thing. And you'll actually be able to target that sword. We're going to shoot that sword. You'll see it. It's hard to explain. It sounds stupid the way I'm saying it right now, but you'll you'll see how it plays out. And everything else I'll just try to show you lead by example here. Alrighty, let's try to get in close early. Oh my goodness. Not gonna not gonna cover recover, unfortunate. That was BS. That attack really sucks because you can't place him. I don't mind that one. It's the one where he goes like really high up in the air.
Dude, that one sucked. If you can't get it with the gun, make sure you go in for melee. You have to kill that. He even does the slow move in the second phase. It looks like a beach ball at this point. Oh, I can't recover. The camera and targeting stuff is so frustrating. Yeah, sure. Sure. You bastard. You see how ridiculous it is sometimes. Woo, this is fun. Oh no, my gun is out. Oh well, just gotta axe him. Gotta axe him. Good times. Good times. All right, let's check out this item we just grabbed. It is a new helm. This is important to put on right now, but let's go ahead and read why. One of the precious secrets of Kanehurst, the old king's crown is said to reveal illusions and expose a mirage that hides a secret. And so Logarius donned the crown of his own volition, determined to prevent a single soul from stumbling upon the vile secret what visions did he see sitting serenely upon his new throne? Oh, we're fancy. Okay, so when you wear this crown, you want to approach the uh, area where he was seated, basically where he began the fight. And you'll get this cutscene. Okay. 
There is no enemy waiting for us, so you don't need to be worried about low health or anything like that. I'm definitely not going to use a blood vial. Never want to use blood vials for no reason. When we come in here, but here lieth our throne. the queen starts speaking. Kneel before us, or get thee gone. Might do that. Visitor, moon-scented hunter. I am Annalise, queen of Castle Canehurst. <laughs> Ruler of the vile bloods and sworn enemy of the church. Yet our people are murdered and we are prisoner to this wretched mask. What is it thou art in search of? All right, we're going to swear oath to the vile bloods. Now, if you're not sure what this is, this is a online covenant just like any of the other things. Um, but there's a reason, actually there's a few reasons we want to do this. First of all, we want to do this to get the badge so we can unlock some new gear at the merchant. Secondly, there's going to be a note over to our right that we're going to grab. Now, if for whatever reason you don't want to join this covenant, you can absolutely grab the letter to our right and then leave. You don't have to do this. I'm choosing to do this for the loot and the emote and to show you guys what happens. Well, well. An odd hunter thou art indeed. We've tired of these piteous nights. Share in our plight and take oath against the church. If thou wouldst this path walk, I prithee partake of my rotted blood. Okay, so now we decide to swear the vile blood oath. Very well. Drink deep of our blood. Feel the spreading corruption burn. <laughs> now, thou art too a vile blood. We too, the very last on this earth. Perfect. So we get the Carol Rune Corruption, we get the Canehurst Badge, which allows us to buy some nice armor. And we get this emote that I'm currently positioned in, Respect. It's honestly a pretty cool emote. We're not going to offer any blood dregs. Wait thy return for the honor of Canehurst. For the honor, milady. All right, so we're going to grab this item here. This is most importantly why we want to be here, the unopened summons. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. It's going to be just like the item that we used to get here, the Canehurst summons that was named for us. So if we look at this one, it says an old sealed summons. Like the first of its kind, it is an invitation to Canehurst, but for whom is not known, as it lacks an addressee. So... We are going to take this to Alfred, one of the first NPCs we met in the game, and we're going to help him complete his storyline. This is very important because we're going to get multiple rewards for this, and we're also going to get a Carol rune that's going to be very effective for us. All right, so what we're going to do here is light the lamp and then return to the hunter's dream. So if you want to check out what armor we can get now, just go to purchase. And you're going to go down to the gear here, and you can see the Canehurst set. That's because we picked up that badge. <laughs> now, what I want to do is go ahead and Welcome use these, these Blood Echoes. Again, remember, we're working on Endurance for the time being. Farewell, good. May you f now, we don't need this crown on. I think it looks pretty cool. Reminds me of the Burger King's Burger King Kids Club, I think. Uh, but we're gonna go Fashion Souls here. I'm gonna put on that, and then I'm gonna put on the Executioner's Garb.
Nice. Looking pretty cool. All right, so where we're gonna run, uh, we're going now is Forbidden Woods. We've got a little bit of running around to do to go find Alfred. Okay. So we're actually gonna be returning to where we came from to get to the Forbidden Woods. Oh, that's good. I'm just on a roll today. We're gonna hang a right. That sounded lovely. I think a villager is throwing bombs at us. And we should not encounter anything dangerous. We cleared the bad dudes. We've got the, uh, the interesting fellow waiting for us right here. I love this guy. Yep, he's still dead. So when we get back into the Cathedral Ward, when we get to the area right around this corner, we're going to see Alfred. Hello. Oh, good to see you safe. Now, let's think up something to discuss. Just tell me what piques your interest. All we really need to do here is give him the unopened summons. Ah, uh -huh. is that the sigil of Kanehurst? I've heard tell of Kanehurst nobles and their amusingly pompous invitations. Wonderful. I thank you profusely. I will depart immediately, but first, a token of my gratitude. All right. And we get another nice formal bow. Ah, I feel my master's hand at work. Praise the good blood. And let us cleanse these tarnished streets. It has been an honor, but I must say goodbye. Let us cleanse these tarnished streets. And may the good blood guide your way. Oh, the good blood. Okay, so he is going to be returning back to the queen. So we need to head back that away to go find him there. We got a couple more stops. Now we need to go to the vile blood queen's chamber. into fleshy pink pulp. There, you filthy monstrosity. What good's your immortality now? Try stirring up trouble in this sorry state. All mangled and twisted with every inside on the outside for all the world to see. <laughs> I'd say Alfred is quite a bit different than before, huh? Doesn't he look like Pyramid Head? <laughs> oh. oh, you, is it? Look at this. Thanks to you, I've done it. Well, isn't it wonderful? Now Master can be canonized as a true martyr. <laughs> I've done it. I have. <laughs> All right, so we get another emote. <laughs> I've done it. I have. <laughs> All right, he's just going to repeat that. If you look over here, you can see her head, and she's pretty much exactly what he said. But if you pay attention, you can see that there's movement in these organs. So she is uh, still living to an extent. And you grab the queenly fre flesh, queenly fresh. Let's inspect this. It writhes eerily. Pretty disgusting, eh? All right, let's take a look at that. Uh, there we go. 
What remains of Annalise, Blood Queen of Canehurst? This pinkish lump of flesh remains warm as if cursed. All hail the undying queen of blood. Yeah, I'm going to say that's probably not what you want when you wish for immortality. Just going to go out on a limb on that one. All right, so we've got uh, one more stop to the Hunter's Dream, and then we're off to Cathedral Ward. All right, so there's a few things we're going to do here before we leave the hub. First, we're going to talk to Old Lady. Okay, so we're gonna answer I have my woes to share and you can basically answer this up to six times and you'll know how many times you've answered this because she'll give you uh, X amount of potions per time you've asked this or answered this so you don't want to answer it any more than six times or she will be killed after the seventh. This will help you forget. Forget your troubles. Forget your cares. She's got the sauce. <laughs> so we get the sedative. I'm just going to power through the rest of that because it's just really you repeat this a few times. So essentially, after the third time, she's going to need to go gather more. So she won't be able to give us any right now. But what happens is we go rest, uh, do other things. When we come back, there'll be a note here. <clears throat> she's going to collect more of this. Um, uh, what is this? Good God. Sedative. Let's go ahead and read it. Liquid medicine concocted at Bergenworth calms the nerves. Those who delve into the arcane fall all too easily to madness. And thick human blood serves to calm the frayed nerves of these inquisitive minds. Naturally, this often leads to reliance on blood ministration. Okay, so we can go through that process with her three more times and keep her alive. If we send her out to collect any more after that, she'll end up dying. So just know that there's not much reason to care one way or the other. But if that matters to you, then now you know. If we're going to go ahead and collect the free blood from her. Brave hunter, thank you. The tower together, I can't hear, is my iffy. Yes, coming now. Okay, so we use the blood of Adela the same way we use Yosefka's. And if you wanted to return to Yosefka from the front door, you could get more blood. Brave, they're up. All right, so let's go ahead and equip that. They have different effects, but you know you want to use them both in uh, boss fights. I typically prefer. All right, so we're gonna head out here, and what we're doing right now is we're just going. To the original location of Alfred. Um, you can kill this stuff pretty much cannon fodder right now. Ooh, I thought the doggy was dead. Dog just ran right through the fire. As you can see, I'm being very careless against these enemies because don't really serve much of a threat. Come on, puppy. All right. And here we 
are. Good old Alfred. So this is what we came here for, the Radiance. We're going to have to travel back to the Hunter's Dream to be able to equip that. But essentially, that is all we came here for. I'm going to take a little shorty cut. So yeah, uh, I'll be running my way back there. But just so you guys don't have to wait while I talk about random stuff, that's going to be the end of the episode. I would love to see you guys join me for some live streaming over on Twitch. I do it pretty much daily, so you can go check me out. It's bald and bearded over there on Twitch. Same user information. I felt like I was running in the wrong place for a second. It's hard to talk about stuff and do things simultaneously. So yeah, twitch.tv, bald and bearded. I'll be streaming some Breath of the Wild over there tonight. So the next episode I film of this tomorrow, I'll probably be making some wrong button presses again and being real frustrated with myself. But like I said, I'd love to see you guys there. Stop by, say hello. Let me know that you came from the Bloodborne Guide, and I will apologize to you immensely. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.